What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Lou's Coach Review back here with another review, and that's right, today we're going to be doing a review on two devices. That's right, we're going to be doing a review on two devices today, and that is the Defiant Designs Triple 18650 Squonk Mod and the Dual 18650 Squonk Mod, both released by Defiant Designs. Now, this red one here that I got is serial number 00094, and the black dual is coming in at 01564. So I'm guessing they made an abundance of these and probably a limited batch of these. Or I just got an earlier version of this one as opposed to that one. But I'll tell you this though. I never liked squonking. I was never a squonk fan. And, and the, the reason why is because there's never really... I never really came across a squonk that I liked. Yes, I have the Half Moon Mods squonker. Yes, I have the Signature Tips Design squonker. That one was cool also with the silver bar and everything. Yeah, that hit pretty hard, but I still never really appreciated it um, until I came across these two, okay? Now, I've had other squonk designs in the past. I've had, you know... I've had the um, the top side, you know, I got the top side, it's 21,700, but it's regulated, you know, and it only goes up to a certain amount of wattage, which to me, you know, whatever. So, uh, yeah, and it was 21,700, blah, 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 but I'm more of the mechanical guy. I like the mechanical mod. I'm not so much the regulated guy. I, I never really liked the way of regulated vape, uh, device vape, really. I never really did. I liked using the actual battery power going directly to my coil and having that instantaneous response. Now, uh, the triple 18650, I got it in red. I've got a 25 millimeter apocalypse set up with a squonk pin in there. And then I've got a recurve on my dual 18650 model, which I own about 30 recurves. I bought them all from Mike Vapes. So I didn't get them for free. I did buy them from Mike Vapes and it's the one RDA that he made that I liked the most. You know, out of all of his product that he came out with, aside from the clutch mod, the clutch is, an, is a very good mechanical box mod basically so it is a mechanical it is in a box and yeah and that one okay that one i like a lot so i like the clutch but i really like the recurve and this has been my favorite rda by him to this date to me it's perfect for squonking because i could put a dual 18 uh i could put dual coils in here and flood the juice well and still get enough juice on the cotton and the coils without there being any leakage that comes out the holes for the venting or the, you know, the airflow holes. So I like that. So the mm -hmm. recurve works fine. I still have the actual drip tip that came with my recurve on here, which I never really cared for drip tips that come with RDAs. I usually just get like a double helix design or some other type of drip tip from some other drip tip company out there. Uh, Chris Caps, he makes, you know, Chris Caps made awesome drip tips, so I used to just buy them from him all the time. I don't know if he's up and running anymore, so uh, I'm gonna have to check back with him and see if uh, Chris Caps is still available. But um, all in all though, the Dual 18650 is pretty much always in my hand, is always in my pocket, and it's, so strange because you know me being the guy who's the mech mod guy that everyone you know turns to for mechanical mod you know instructions and so forth don't get me wrong i still love my tube mods i have a lot of mechanical tube mods i have a lot that i still have not reviewed or showcased and i will eventually i will but for now today it's defiant designs so uh when I initially got these two squonkers. They came with gold-plated copper contacts and hardware. And in the course of this video, uh, I think I'm going to do the unboxing on this mod 
Probably not the, this one because it's going to be the same thing. So why show the same thing twice and bore you guys? So in the course of this video, I when I had purchased this mod, I purchased this mod second. First, I purchased the triple 18650 by itself from uh, vapesourcing.com. I think I spent $85 on it on the triple, which I thought was a great price. And I later bought the dual 18650 squonk and I bought it from Defiant Designs website, this one. So this I bought at Vape Sourcing, this one I bought at Defiant Designs website. And on their website, I saw that you could purchase silver plated hardware. So I was like, wow, that will be great. So you know what, I'll pick up this silver hardware for this mod and I'll buy this mod at the same time and then down the line, I'll buy silver hardware for this as well. So when I received this mod, it came with the silver hardware for this mod, at least I thought. Now, the silver hardware, I think it's 30 bucks for the silver hardware. And when I was doing the videos initially, because I actually filmed the unboxing and everything um, like a month or so ago, and I just never, I never did, you know, I never followed up and finished the video, and it's been pretty much dormant. But as of today, today is April the 22nd, I think, April 21st, April 22nd. So as of today, this is this portion of this video, basically. So uh, as of today, I can tell you this and say this, that for the time that I've had these products, I've been in love. They're awesome, awesome squonking devices. The only disappointment I've had so far was that the silver hardware I bought for this and was starting to do a video on for this, they had mistakenly sent me silver hardware for this one. And I wrote to them, I was like, you can see on my receipt, I chose the triple 18650 hardware. So what they did as far as good customer service goes, they sent me the silver hardware to this one for free. Because they realized not only did I buy this mod and silver hardware for this one, they thought that I, you know, that maybe I selected the wrong hardware because I was buying this mod and they gave me silver hardware for this one. So in my video, I was taking this apart and I was putting the silver hardware in and I found out it's not the correct silver hardware. In fact, it was for this. So in the video, you'll see me put silver hardware in, I think, this one or this one, whichever one. But either way, both of these mechanical squonk devices both have silver plated copper hardware in them. Now, the gold plated copper, I thought, still hit decently hard, like, you know, really hard. So, is there the difference between the silver plated? Very slightly. That's all I can say is a slight difference in this silver plating, uh, this silver plated copper over the gold plated copper. To me, they basically felt the same as far as performance wise and response wise. But I'll tell you this though, regardless of that situation, overall opinion on these, I love them to death. Okay. They're just awesome, awesome mechanical squonk mods. Now, there's a couple companies out there that I know that had series battery formation for Squonk devices, and I would love to have those, but those require a bigger RDA, and they require, require bigger coils, and sometimes a bigger juice bottle. And I myself wanted to come out with a series Squonk device with a huge juice bottle and the whole nine yards and everybody I pitched it to says nope it's not going to sell I was like what everyone said it's not going to sell because we're doing pods right now come out with a good pod system and then we'll consider collaboration with you I said all right no problem and the funny thing is the pod market is disappearing thank god it's going away. 
thank God. And the black market people out there are going back to mechanical tube mods and RDAs and re unregulated mechanical squonks, which I'm super happy about, okay? I'm so happy about that. Um, you know, a lot of people, they fell into that whole trap, you know, like a lot of these Chinese companies fell into the trap that, oh, this one's doing pods, that one's doing pods, we all got to do pods because everybody's doing pods. I don't like pods. I hate pod systems. I really do. There's a couple I've tried that I kind of liked. Some I used for a couple weeks and I thought were great. But in retrospect, I can't stand pods. I hate pods. So it's not for me. You know, some people like them. It's just not for me though. But, however, I never liked squonking. Not until I came across the Defiant Designs triple 18 650 and dual 18 650 lightweight aluminum construction great coating the coating is really really good on these and <clears throat> the bottles that they come with are awesome bottles the syringe and hardware within the bottle itself is awesome it's not like a little plastic rubber line going into a bottle which when you squeeze you know the squeeze bottle gets stuck or anything like that these are so efficient. They work so well, okay? I, I don't know how to explain it to you, but they work very well, okay? And they just feel great in the hands. The Triple 18 650, the way it's formed to your hand, feels great. You know, and it fires nice. It hits pretty decently hard. I gotta say, I've got three core, uh, three core, twenty-four gauge stainless steel wrapped in uh, thirty-six gauge nichrome ninety. No, I'm sorry, thirty-six gauge nichrome eighty. So it's a fused three core Clapton coil. All right, I got it wrapped five times around a two and a half millimeter, and they hit really, really nice. Just really nice and. I got to say the triple 18 650, the three batteries in here for the squonking, the batteries last me, I would say a good day and a half before I change them out. And that's pretty impressive because with a single 18 650 or a single 21 700 mechanical tube mod on any vaping structure, regardless of coil size and so forth, it'll last me like maybe to two hours and I got to carry a whole bunch of batteries with me. So. If I'm driving, I'm using this. If I'm at home, I'm using this. I have not put these down. These have not disappointed me in the longest time. and or, or ever, I should say. Not in the longest time, but ever. They've never disappointed me. And, you know, as far as squawking, I use my ring finger on the right hand, which I know the right hand you don't put a ring on, but it would be that finger. I could use that one. I use my index finger, whichever. It works. It's comfortable. It's easy. And uh, having the RDA on one end and the button on the other end is great. Phenomenal. Now in here I'm vaping Turkish Cake by MTurk. Or I should say Malicious E-Liquids that manufactures his juice from. So Malicious, their juice maker is phenomenal. Phenomenal. He makes the best juices. Their mixologist over at Malicious is just phenomenal. This ju juice Turkish cake takes the cake. In here, I've got Strawberry Crunch by Tailored House E-Liquids. One of my most favorite E-Liquids. It's a Strawberry Crunch. I've been vaping it for three years straight now. I'm not tired of it. I'm not bored of it. I've been trying to replicate this juice flavor, can't do it. Been trying to replicate this juice flavor, can't do it. I've tried a hundred times over and over again on DIY and I still can't get it, okay? So I've been trying and trying and trying to replicate it. You know, recipe after recipe, just still trying to nail it and I'm close, but I'm not there just yet, okay? So uh, enough talking from me. I want to go up close. We're going to check out both of these devices, which I've already recorded them, but um, I want you guys to see 
uh, my experience with it. Okay, and see all the little bits and pieces and everything that makes up these two products before me. Okay, and uh, let's do that. So let's go up close, let's check it out, go from there. Okay, so opening the package, you basically just lift your top container off. Inside it says, thank you for purchasing the Defiant Designs uh, TS or DS. So this is just a universal uh, page, basically, that they use in either or. Uh, included, you get a hex driver, you get magnets, bottles, drip tip inserts, travel caps, a uh, lot of stuff inside. So we're going to go through that once we uh, open this up and take a look at it. They also give you an instruction manual, all the pieces, where they are, how to locate them, and so forth. So it tells you everything about the product and its whereabouts. And they're actually numbered. So you can see on here what the numbers are. And you just basically look at this little booklet and it descriptively tells you what's in there basically. How to uh, remove it, how to take it apart. And if you get lost, you could always go to the contact defiant.mfg at gmail.com so you could check them out as well. And on the opposite side, just, you know, more uh, thank yous and warning labels and so forth and so forth. So pretty cool. Uh, over here is your Allen tool and I like this because they actually give you an actual tool instead of just a little Allen key. So you actually have this metal uh, CNC stainless steel uh, handle with a little grippy grommets on here. So you got these little O-rings on here which uh, which give it some good grip. This one here you'll see that there are grommets on there or just grubs not even grubs, what am I talking about? Just O-rings on here, basically, to give you a nice little firm grip when you twist the Allen key. And the tip of the Allen key is right there, so this is the tool that is needed for uh, dismantling your product. Inside, they also give you a key to remove the battery, uh, well, not remove, just to back up and loosen the battery caps on it. And then they also give you these, which I like these because uh, if there's any space between your RDA or if there's any um, leakage to prevent any juice from going into your mechanical uh, squonk device. You got this little clear um, disc that you put under your RDA basically just just to keep things clean. Okay, I like that as well. Now removing the product, looking underneath you'll see you have one, two, uh, battery screws and then one cap for the squonk bottle. So if you just back this out slightly And we'll use our key Let's use the key. We have it might as well use it, right? So we have our key here to back out the screws which we'll do and you don't have to take the caps completely off You just got to loosen them basically and then push down and slide forward now if anything's blocking, obviously you got to back out another cap. Okay, so it's probably my bottle cap, which it was. And on this cap, they have slides on here. CNC'd where it's there's a male groove here and a female groove down here, which you could slide this in. Okay, I like this because you could slide it in. And once again, just like the triple 18650, there are four Neo Di Diamond. Uh, Neodiminium, whatever they call them, very strong, tiny, little, small magnets, gold-plated copper cap, gold-plated copper caps as well, and you can see that right there. Okay, move that aside. Inside the package, give you little baggies inside the channels where the batteries are. So let me just remove this. In here we have spare O-rings, spare hardware. Uh, an extra spring. This is the spring that's located underneath the button, uh, the actual firing button. You get more grub screws, uh, gold-plated grub screws as well, and a ton of little O-rings that is needed for um, the actual squike, squonking bar, which is right here. So here's a bar, and it has an O-ring on it. You can see there's a little red O-ring there. These will go over time with juice exposure, so you're gonna need to replace those in the future. And then, as we back out more product, now 
Here is the bottle. Uh, these are bottle tips. These are juice bottle tips, basically. So uh, if you're going to have extra juice on you, so if you want to fill up juice and not want to carry around a 100 ml bottle of juice mm -hmm. with you all day, just carry this around with you with the extra bottle, and then you'll, you know, you'll be able to just swap out the juice, basically. You swap out your bottles when you're on the go. The top portion here is sealed by an O-ring to make sure there's no uh, air leakage. So you're not leaking any air when you squonk your bottle. There's no uh, air leakage. These bottles are actually very good. The juice doesn't tend to stick to it. If you wash a bottle out, it comes clean. So that's also a plus. So the way this works is basically you have your cap and then you have your syringe looking tube basically where the juice is going to travel just slide that through and that completes it sealed by an o-ring around the shaft there and sealed by an o-ring on the bottom there and then another o-ring up top here okay so there's no juice leakage basically when using this device and then when you fill up this bottle with juice just take this push down make sure the o-ring seals the top lip and you're good you would just squonk Now to remove this bottle, I'm just going to push it forward. You can see I have another syringe with another bottle, which I like. So I'm glad that they give you two of those syringes with the O-ring. So you get a lot of hardware with this device. You're not just buying a device, you're getting a lot of stuff with it. You got a spring-loaded 510 up top, which is nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and back out these screws. Now when backing out these screws, please make sure that your Allen key is all the way in and you get a firm seating of the tool inside this little screw. Okay, you don't want to strip out your tool in the process of doing this. That's not something you want to do. Okay. So, we have O-ring, 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 positive contact, positive contact, Allen key, Allen key, Allen key, Allen key. Okay. Now. You get the bar for the contacts. That's nice. Another bar right there. Now this is for your juice to go in. There's a spring right here. If you back out this screw, that gives you access to the button. There's no need to get to the button today. I just wanted to see the innards basically, see what's inside there. Today I'm using a little tailored house e-liquid. This is the strawberry crunch flavor. Has a picture of a strawberry, a cupcake with pancakes. This holds 10 milliliters, this juice bottle. So it holds an ample amount of juice in here basically. So you got a lot of juice that goes into the squonk bottle, which is nice.
Now when you place your syringe inside the bottle, you're going to want your finger over the top so you don't get juice traveling through the syringe. Then remove your finger and you're okay. So now I got a nice tight seal. The o-ring is holding the juice in place in the bottle and the bottle's clean so there's no juice leaking all over the place. And just take your little tool, stick it in a hole and tighten up your caps. Like I say, you don't need to remove these caps, you just loosen them up to where you can slide this off your box. In this case, we're just tightening. You don't have to make it Superman tight. As soon as it turns, as soon as it hits, just give it uh, an eighth of a turn. And that's it. And there's our device. So now I'm going to put my Pandemic RDA up top. I want to see if there's going to be any overhang. It might be a little overhang, but I'm not so worried. Very slight overhang. But still, very nice. There's our Pandemic. going to fill the juice well with some juice and the rest I'm going to paint with my juice bottle. These coils are a Big Lou special. They're uh, Twisted Messes 24 gauge Nichrome 80 wrapped in 36 gauge Nichrome 80. They're basically fused Claptons. Not aliens, not Staggertons, nothing crazy. Three millimeter wide, uh, so three millimeters in diameter and a five wrap. Ooh, angry. That's an angry one. So they had sent me the silver hardware for the Defiant Design Dual 18650 Squawk device, uh, not the triple. Okay, I paid for the triple because I wanted it in a triple. But, you know, when I called them up and I showed them the proof that I got, that I purchased the triple 18650, but they sent me the dual 18650 silver hardware. I guess it's a misunderstanding. It, it could have been easily done because I was purchasing the dual. So in their mind, how could they know I needed it for the triple? So they sent me hardware for the dual and not the triple, which I went ahead and installed already. So seeing that on the top here, you can see my silver screws up top and then on the bottom also, you have the silver cap and the silver negatives as well. So I'm going to go ahead and change the hardware in the triple 18650 because now they had corrected the issue and they had sent me the silver hardware that was needed. So they sent me uh, basically the silver hardware that I needed to get the job done for the triple 18650. Now this is the top portion of the mechanical triple 18650 squonk. You have a contact screw, contact screw, contact screw. Then you have an Allen screw, Allen screw, Allen screw, Allen screw. These four Allen screws keep the sandwich of the contact area all together. Now if you have a hard time seeing it, let me just get a white backdrop so you can see this much better. All right, so when you take the top portion off, you got to understand there's a... Uh, couple Delrin pieces here that are sandwiched together. There's two Delrin pieces here and then you have the aluminum CNC uh, top portion of this device. This was the four gold screws went in there and this is the 510 connection in which they also give you a silver plated 510 connection as well if you want to change out the 510 connection. There is a silver spring already in here, but I believe it's a non-conductive spring. So that kind of defeats the purpose, I guess. 
Uh, there is a washer here and these little O-rings, you do get extra O-rings in the kit, okay? These screws are very, very tiny here, these contact screws, very tiny. So when uh, backing them out and screwing them in, please do not cross thread them. Please be patient in removing these three screws, okay? Those three screws, you have to be very patient in removing. If you have to be sure you use a very fine tipped screwdriver, nothing like, you know, your dad's screwdriver you find in a garage, basically. This is a little electrician screwdriver that I'm using. I wouldn't use the one that comes inside of the uh, coiling kits or anything like that. Just get, a, you know, a micro screwdriver with a small head on it and you'll be fine, okay? Don't use a knife. Because then if it slips, you are either cut the device or cut an O-ring or possibly cut your hand. So you don't want to do that either. So, let's take these screws off. Very easy to lose. You can see there's hardly any thread on these things. Very, very tiny. I'll try and put this on a screwdriver and go up close so you can see. Oop, I can't even do that. Yeah, very tiny threads, so be sure not to lose these because it's always nice to have extra hardware. If you strip a silver screw or you lose a silver screw, keep your gold-plated copper screws because you will eventually need them in the future. If you lose one of them, it's nice to have the backup hardware. Okay, and if you have the means, maybe pick up, you know, two packs of the hardware because this way it will last you, especially since vaping is being banned and all. And you're not allowed to vape anymore because it'll be against the law to buy products online. So where on earth are you going to be able to buy these products, you know? Now these are four stainless steel screws, all in equal length. Uh, they're, one's not longer than the other, okay? Just got to be sure when you thread them in, you thread them in evenly, okay? It's nice to have those evenly. The kit will, the, the device also comes with extras of these screws as well, which is nice. You know, they really take care of their patrons, basically. They really take care of their consumers, this company, because they really give you a lot of extra stuff. And I really dig that about this company. Not only is the quality there, but they're hooking up their people as well. So if you shop with them, guaranteed you're gonna get a lot of parts with your device, okay? So if you lose something or something rips or tears or breaks, you know, you'll have a replacement piece for it. If in the event down the line, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, I don't know if you're, it's gonna be easy to find these little O-rings, so you might have to do something with hot glue or something, I guess, down the future. Now in the back, there's a little T that goes here, which is this piece right here. This T is the female threaded screw holes, and it's going to be the contacts for your 18650 positives, okay? So the positive portions of your 18650s are going to be making connection with this, and these are the screws that the, it'll be touching the battery. So, I'm going to cast this over to the side. Now, as I take this apart, I'm always remembering... Uh, how I how I left it, how I took it apart. So I took it apart with the hole over here, so I'm just gonna push this over to the side. That's where that is. This is just a little disc plate, which it does nothing, it's just a spacer, basically. It's like a riser. So if you were ever a skateboarder, this is like considered a riser, okay? So only you would know what that is if you were a skateboarder. Now, this is the top, top portion. And you see, I keep everything together. Four screws there, three screws there, this plate here, okay? I like to keep everything close to each other. You know, if I, if I look at here, this is how this plate is sitting, this is how this plate is sitting. This hole goes to this hole, not this one, you understand? So when I work and I do things, I, I have a system. I do things specifically based on a system. Now this is a much larger screw right here. You back this out, just back it out. 
Nice and easy, no rush, no stripping, none of that. Remove that big screw, put it on the side. Then we're going to remove this piece, which is the spring. Don't forget to leave, don't forget to put the spring back in. Now this right here is the difference between the squonk hole and the actual firing contact. So this is that big contact that's part of the button. And that is basically uh, going to push this plate up until it makes contact with this gold bar right here. When it makes contact with that gold bar, it'll close the circuit. And I'll show you afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And remember, this is not only your squonk hole, but it's also your 510. Okay, and yes, there's an O-ring here as well. So I'm just going to push that out. Now when I push it out, first thing I see here is an O-ring right there. So there's a, a small, tiny O-ring there. So, you know, keep in mind, tiny O-rings everywhere, you know. If that tears or breaks, you could always replace it. They give you the replacement piece. This is our non-conductive silver spring. And our button, I'm going to put that over to the side. be cool if you could actually change out the button color, but I didn't see anything anywhere regarding that. So I'm going to just clean this up real quick, get some excess juice off of there. It's our 510 connection. And this is going to require a much larger screwdriver, like your household screwdriver. Can't use this one because it doesn't fit anywhere. All right, so... I already took a household screwdriver that fit from here to here and pre-loosened this. Now in order to loosen this from the top, keep in mind you have to go clockwise. So from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you're going clockwise. You cannot go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. You know, a lot of you think if you back it up, you'd be unthreading it, but in this position you have to understand there is a small ledge on the 510 connection female thread that has to stop and prevent this from coming out at any portion whatsoever. So from the direction that I'm going to be turning this, I'm actually turning it the way I'm facing this female thread. I'm turning it clockwise, okay? Maybe on screen it's going to look counterclockwise to you, but I'm turning this clockwise to be able to back this screw out basically, because that's all it is. It's a male thread on the outside of the 510 and then a female thread on the inside of the 510. Obviously the inside 510, 510 threading is for your atomizer, but the outer thread is a male thread on the outside portion of this 510 and that is what screws this in to this top cap. See? And keep in mind, all the hardware is gold-plated copper. And all the one that comes standard with it. Now, gold-plated copper, I find it hits really, really nice, the gold-plated copper. It's not like it's a weak conductivity or anything like that. Gold-plated copper hits very, very well. I, I like the performance. So far, on a dual 18650 that I have the silver-plated hardware on, I feel the gold-plated hardware is kind of outperforming on the dual 18650. Now that's just me. That's just, you know, my opinion doesn't mean anything. But I can't wait to see what it's going to do on a triple 18650 because I have a feeling it's going to do really well on a triple 18650. Only because we're working with three batteries instead of two. So just a little more consistent with the power. So I went ahead and removed my 510 connection. Remember, when unscrewing it, do not screw it counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. Thread it or screw it. To unthread the 510, you have to turn it clockwise from the top. Okay? From this area here, the top of the device... You have to get your screwdriver in these female cutouts 
and turn it clockwise. Turn it clockwise to unthread, okay? Normally it's turning clockwise to thread on anything in the world, but this is reverse threaded in a sense because you're turning this clockwise to back it out instead of to thread it in. So try to remember that. This way you don't strip the living hell out of your 510 because you want to preserve this gold plated copper one if in the event something were to happen to your silver plated copper 510. Just in case this thing misthreads with an RDA one day or if you're putting a tank on there or whatever the case is, whatever you're threading into your 510, just in case you misalign the threads and you have to back this out and you can't get this anywhere, at least you still have your gold plated copper and it'll work just the same. So this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this upside down. I'm going to place this down here. I'm resting my finger on the back to apply pressure. And then I'm going to turn counterclockwise in here. So I'm applying pressure with my index finger underneath and I'm going to go counterclockwise now. So I'm going to spin this counterclockwise with my screwdriver and thread this in like this. Now I should be using the bigger screwdriver as I preached earlier, but I'm just using this real quick as a quickie. Okay. Now you don't have to wrench this in like Superman. It's not a necessity to wrench this in as Superman. You want it snug, but not Superman tight. You know, once it's in there, it's in there, it'll be flush and then you'll be okay. So you see now we have our silver 510 connection in the top piece of this device, which I actually like the way the silver looks with the red, but red and gold reminds me of that, you know, dot mod style of red uh, RDAs or mech mods from dot mod with gold. Dot mod was big with red and gold. I, I, that's what I liked about dot mod. They were classy. You know, you could say what you want about the company, but you know, real classy in the designs of their pieces, basically. So now I'm going to take my gold pieces and just bag them up. You know, everything goes where it's supposed to go. That's why I have it. So this was plates. These are screws, the little screws. And the 510. I'm going to use the, I'm going to put the gold plated battery contacts, gold plated copper contacts in there. The squonk bottle cap, that's going to go in there. The four screws, the four gold plated screws that go on the top cap. Okay, I'm keeping all my gold hardware together. Just all the screws in one baggie. Alright, that's everything. Now I'm going to take this, throw it in a bigger Ziploc, as well as this, bigger Ziploc. Keep that in there. Now one of my gold-plated cop, uh, gold-plated copper bars still has an O-ring over there. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hold on to that O-ring onto that device, onto this uh, gold plate, basically. Because I want it to, if in the event, if I strip or that one breaks on me in the future, I could always take it off of that part. Take my button, and place it underneath with the spring. This is a non-conductive button, you can see. That'll happen. Now when you put this piece back on, you want the O-ring on this side facing the 510. This O-ring prevents any leakage spilling on your, uh, on your juice bottle and per tries to prevent the liquid from getting into your device. Now as you saw my device, I'm a over dripper. I have a tendency to over drip and over squonk sometimes where I think it just, there's only so much these O-rings could do basically. So liquid just comes bursting out. I'm gonna take my silver squawk bar. Now remember, O-ring side, 
goes towards the connection. So I'm going to put this here, push it through, and it'll be right there. So this is what's squonking to my RDA is that tiny little hole right there. This is going to fit the squonk bottle syringe. This is going to go here basically. So if I connect these, they connect basically. You have the female plate and the male of the squonk bottle. Now what I like about this, this is also, you could take this apart. Small o-ring there, another o-ring there, another o-ring up top. Three o-rings just on the syringe alone. And it's washable and it's interchangeable. So that's what I like about that. And there's also, believe it or not, a tiny little o-ring in there. You know, you can't see it on this camera view, but there is a little orange o-ring in there. I'm just going to push this up so we get a good seal. Cast that aside. Put this here. Okay. Now I'm going to screw in my big silver screw. I want it to sit flat. And always take your time with screwing these things in. You can go reverse first if you want to try and see if you can get the threads to line up and then go clockwise. Now it's on there good. I'm not over tightening it like a lunatic. I'm just going to do eh, just one little hard push and that's it. Now the button is functional. Keep in mind it's working now. Okay. Now we have this other plate which came off one of these plates, okay, which is actually this plate right here. You can see there's a cutout right here to put this silver plated copper plate in. And what this silver plated copper plate does, it's going to hold the threads of my contact screws. One, two, three contact screws. And this where the washer is will go towards my squonk. All right, so where this orange washer goes, that's going towards the squonk bottle hole. But before I put this on here, I gotta put the spacer. This is the riser. Okay, that is the riser. I'm going to place this down. Now, how does this work? Some people might ask. They're like, whoa, I don't understand. Isn't a riser blocking that contact? No, because keep in mind, and I'm going to show you, that riser is keeping an even space around my contact screw from my button. So when I push my button in, this contact screw will make contact with this, with this portion of the plate right here. I'm going to turn this around, place this in here one more time, take this, place it on. Now, you have to make sure that this lines up and stays in there, okay? So when you put this on, maybe it's best you just do the plate like that, and then you put that riser on because that riser to me is holding that T in place because if I don't do this with that on there I go to put this on the T is always going to fall out so this is going to sandwich this thing closed so I'm just going to keep this here so I can keep that plate in correct line all right so I'm going to take this push down over here line up the holes for the Allen screws, in which the Allen screws you're using again. There's no silver plated Allen screws because these are not conductive screws. These are just screws to mount your contact plate to your top portion.
Now I do everything at a diagonal all the time. It's uh, what I do from installing cylinder heads or installing tires on a car. You always want to go diagonal. You don't want to go clockwise or anti-clockwise. You know, you want to go the diagonal. If you tighten here, you tighten diagonal. This way it, it just, you know, it's just one way of doing a flush fit. Now I'm not tightening it all the way because I want to make sure all my threads are lined and good. So all my screws are going in nice and even. Now I'm going to push down on the plate. Just make that a little tight. Not super tight, just a little tight. Then a little tight. Little tight. That's it. We have one, two, three, four Allen screws installed. Okay. I installed that bigger screw to the contact button. And now I'm going to screw in my three little contact screws, my three silver plated copper contact screws. Now these have such tiny threads on them. You want to be able to thread them in correctly. Do not want to misthread these. And trust me, you will misthread these if you rush it. Do not rush it. I would suggest take the screw, pick it up by hand, stick it in a little hole, just get it to sit in there. Okay, put your finger, just put finger pressure and start turning because it'll be easy to misthread these things. So I caught a little bit, very tiny hair I caught and I'm threading it on. Now I'm not doing it Superman tightness, just enough where it stops. And that's it. Threads on until it stops and I'm happy. Oh, and look what happened. My little O-ring came out. And that's going to tighten up my seal. So be sure you get the correct screw and the correct hole. Do not, th do not thread them in to the O-rings. Thread them in to where the silver bar is. Okay, so snug, 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 snug. Now, the O-ring that wraps around here is always going to pop off when you're putting this plate back on. So if you want, it could go either way, this way or the other way, it doesn't matter. Just get it to fit flush in this little hole. Okay, it's always going to pop out because if you use it, it gets hot. And it expands and shrinks and expands and shrinks over and over again. So you want to make sure this is press fitted in there and it fits nicely. And I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing. Who, who would know what I forgot? The most important thing I forgot. And this happens. This happens sometimes. I'm just going to have to do this on speed. I'm going to have to fast forward this. I forgot the spring. This tiny little spring that wraps around the squonk female.
Now when you put the spring back on the squonk male, when you put that little silver spring in there, you want to put pressure on these plates. See how like there's play in these plates? And that play can might possibly make you misthread your Allen screws when you put them in. I was wondering why it was so easy putting this back together again. But you just want to install one screw, not fully tight, just on there, just to keep pressure on that spring. And when you let go, it's going to pop up the other side. So you want to put pressure on the other side as well. I'm going to go diagonal. And we're going to tighten. Not Superman tightness, just tight enough to where it's going to hold. That's from my final screw. Just going to give it a quick turn, quick little quarter turn, quarter turn. Quarter turn. The final one had some, final one was a little loose and now it's tight. So now everything, diagonal, 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 diagonal. Everything is nice and firm. These contacts are in nicely. Just going to check one last time, see how the pressure is on them. That's good. That's also good. That moved a tiny hair. So the top portion of our top cap is complete. If I put pressure here, the throw is very, very stiff. But I like that. I like that nothing can bump into it and make it fire. Now putting this back together again is really quite simple. Just make sure your 510 connection of your top portion is in line with where the bottle goes. Okay. You can see that's where the bottle goes. It's got the bigger opening on the bottom. Line this up as evenly as you can. The goal is to make it sit flush. Excellent. Take a silver screw, pop that in. I'm not going to thread it yet. Just want them. I want them all lined up the holes. Start here by the button. Tighten it up slowly. I tightened it till the thread stopped, not until I supermanned it down, okay? So I just tightened it till I felt a little tightness and I stopped. Once I felt the tiniest portion of torque on there, I stopped. Because I want to be able to get these Allen grub screws out in the future. God forbid they strip, then what are you going to do then? So now I'm just going to go an eighth of a turn. One, eighth, and there's all diagonals. That's it. Now, a lot of you are probably looking at this and you're saying, wow, how do you take the batteries? How do you put the batteries in and how do you take them out? Well, this is actually machined really, really well. There's a very slight seam right here. And this actually slides out. It's held in by neodymium magnets. And you got four of them there and four here. So you got four there and then four here. Four there, four there. And when you slide this back in, it kind of slides in at an angle. You just kind of get used to it, you know. That's it. It lines up and it's good. It's got the magnets that are holding in tight. It tells you this is the negative portion of your batteries. Do not put this positive down. Do not put it in series. Do not put positive, negative, positive. Don't do that. 
Keep it all negative, basically. All right. So I'm using Tailored House e-liquid to fill my squonk bottle. I love Tailored House e-liquids. This is the strawberry crunch flavor. It says it's a strawberry iced cupcake with pancakes, it looks like, on the logos there. I don't taste any pancakes at all. I just taste deliciousness. It's just one of my most favorite flavors I've ever had in four years. I've been vaping it constantly in four years. Now this one says zero milligrams, but I actually buy it at zero and I add my own nicotine to it because I like vaping roughly around four and a half to five milligram nicotine now. I was at three, but um, I, felt, I found myself vaping more and using up the juice more. So I'm just vaping at basically about a four and a half maybe a five sometimes, but pretty much a four and a half is the sweet spot for me. And I'm just eating this liquid as it drips out. Okay, so filling these bottles, you could use this 100 ml bottle and squeeze the liquid in and it moves at a snail's pace basically. So what I do with all my bottles, I take my bottle and I take a scissor because at the top portion of this hole, it is the smallest point. So I'm just going to go eh, just like literally an eighth of an inch, not even like a sixteenth of an inch and cut at an angle with a scissor. That's it. You cut, you cut it at an angle. So when you go to fill it, juice comes out a little bit faster. If that's not fast enough for you, then go ahead and take your scissor and cut more. Not a lot, just more. Maybe you get a little bit bigger of an opening because as the cone goes down, it widens. See that? The cone goes down, it starts to widen. And you can see that I cut mine on a slant. Yep. Now it's moving like fire. Now I've already pre-cleaned my uh, metal syringe squonk shaft. I've already pre-cleaned it. However, if you want to look at it up close, there's no ring here. There's no ring on the outside. There's no ring there. There's also an O-ring on the inside here. See that little bit of orange right there? There's an O-ring right there. I'm going to go ahead and slide the syringe through. Make sure I got that tight seal. And I spilled my bottle like an idiot. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill it up one more time. I just wasted all that juice. Okay. Put my syringe in. Now when you push your syringe in, because of the vacuum, you might get a little juice that spurts out. But yep, you do get a little juice that spurts out. But it's okay. We're good now. And take this. Slide it through. Sits flush. That's all that matters. As long as it sits flush, we are good. All right, gonna take my 18650 batteries and just go ahead and drop them positive facing down. Okay, positive facing down and you only see the negative portion showing. Slide this into place. Take my covers, my negative covers. Thread them in. Now this kit comes with a tool, which I'm not using, which I should probably go and get. Let me go get it. Now this is the battery tool right here. This is for the battery cap. You can put it on your keychain and use it. Um, I actually have the other one on my keys, but I have a lot of keys on my keys on my key key link, so I don't want to use my keys. In this video so we're just going to use the key by itself this specific tool okay just going to go ahead and insert 
and that's it. Just that's all you gotta do is just insert it and spin it. Now I do it till it's slightly tight, not wrenching. You don't want to wrench battery contacts, that's for sure, because that could lead to, you know, catastrophic behavior of a battery. You know, you don't want to scrunch down your uh, positive portion and you don't want to pierce your bottom negative portion of your battery. So I'm just, you know, till I'm just turning this till it stops and then give it a quarter turn. So right there it stopped and I just give it a quarter turn. That's it. To make sure it's mm -hmm. snug as a bug, but not super wrenched. Okay. So this one I'm going to thread in. So it stopped and now I'm just going to give it quarter turn. That's it. That's all you need. Oh, and your bottle gets this silver cap, which on the cap, it's got a pusher on it. It's got that little spacer that's going to push your bottle up to make sure you're getting full contact and full seal of your squonk bottle to prevent any leakage. I make mine snug but not extremely tight because I don't want it to be squeezing juice out when I don't want juice squoze. Make sure there's no shorts. I'm pushing the button. No shorts, but the connection is not actually closed because I still need a f atomizer on here. Okay, so RDA of choice. I'm using my Armageddon Manufacturing RDA. This is... Uh, the Apocalypse 25 millimeter. Now, for those of you out there who dislike this company, I'm going to let you know one thing, okay? One thing that I found over the years. You could be a leader or you could be a follower. But I'll tell you this much. This company makes some damn good RDAs. Okay, they're great for squonking. There's great for overall use of any type of competition or sub-ohm vaping or anything for that matter. Their RDAs are awesome. I've always loved them and I'll continue to love them and use them. It's just an awesome product. Now the coils I'm, I have wrapped here, this is 24 gauge Nichrome 80 wrapped in 36 gauge Nichrome 80. All twisted messes wire. I do a slow pulsing because I got two hot spots always at the first lead on either side. Slowly pulsing though. This is two and a half millimeters, six wraps on both coils. I like six wraps, a lot of cotton coverage, especially for a squonk device. Now, sometimes I'll do a scrape across the coils, but I don't want to break the 36 gauge wrap on it. So usually I just insert my two and a half millimeter rod and just go back and forth and just kind of move the coil a little bit. That's all.
Now usually when I'm installing a little bit thicker of a cotton, especially in a squonk, because squonks, I don't want the cotton to be loose in a squonk. I want it, for me personally, I found that I like a little tighter. When I push it in there and it gets stuck, just pull on the other side a little bit because you kind of loosen up the fabric a little and then you can get it through. And I'll make my cut then. I like to pre-wick my cotton and coil. I know a lot of people like to show you how it squonks, but I show you this thing squonks amazing. Plus it's the style of RDA that depending on what kind of RDA you're using, how well it squonks as well. Where the uh, squonk 510 pin is on this one, it sticks up a great deal, which I like. So it stands up pretty tall, the squonk pin on this one. It passes the actual RDA base and everything. So I'm going to go ahead make a little room for air. You see down in there, you'll be able to see my 510 squonk pin and where it's sitting. It's actually dead center and you can see how it sticks up. If we look down in there, squonk, fills up nicely. It's going to wet all my cotton. So that was something else, and I gotta tell you, these two mechanical devices are pretty much my utmost favorite devices. Uh, if Defiant Designs does decide to come out with any other product, please let me know. I'd be happy to check it out. And uh, other than that, that's all I gotta say, folks. Now, as far as the channel uh, update, just so everybody knows, I'm gonna be doing, I released a, a YouTube you know, video from my car. It wasn't the most... Uh, wasn't the most nicest looking video. Uh, it was sitting down. I actually looked like Jabba the Hutt in my car. So I looked like I weigh like 8,000 pounds. But I wanted to give everybody a heads up that the channel is going to be making a change. Uh, it is Big Lou East Coast Reviews. The word vapor was never in my title. But, uh, you know, that's the review. That was the choice I was going was vape reviews at that time. I'm still a vapor. I still have tons of product as far as vaping product goes, whether it's old or new. I can still do a lot of reviews on some old product just for the hell of it and give my point of view on it. But um, I will say this, though, I am going to be launching some, uh, you know, new tech reviews as far as like just product in general. Uh, I'm going to be doing DIY videos for e-liquid since, you know, e-liquid is pretty scarce today. I'm going to be showing people how to do certain recipes and how I go about, you know, deciding what's in a flavor or what's in a juice or what makes up a juice completely. It's not just, hey, take this and mix this with this. I'm going to go into detail explanations as to how I figure out if a flavor profile needs a specific flavor and how I go about it. So we're going to dive into that as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do food reviews, tech reviews, uh, gadgets, uh, stuff you could buy online, just about anything. Maybe I'll even venture out and, you know, try a pizza shop and give you a pizza review on New York pizza or something like that, If you know, maybe for tourism or something. You know, whatever. I'm going to try all different facets and outlets of uh, reviews and just see how much I can whore the channel out even more and more. All right? So, from me to YouTube, thank you very much for uh, stopping by. Thanks for checking out the Big Louise Coast Review. Please give this video a thumbs up if you can and try and subscribe and keep your notifications on this channel because you will be notified when I do release another content. And uh, I'm going to be dedicating more time to doing reviews and less time uh, to working for someone else. Okay? So if you, uh, you want to keep watching, you like this review, 
Give it a thumbs up, give me a comment below, and I'm happy to be back, and I'm happy to have all my subscribers still around checking me out. So, peace out, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Laters.